Hello again, friends. I see you're back for another dose of Destiny News. Oh yes indeed, we've got a hell of a lot to talk about. In this video, we're going to look at how the Dreaming City still has plenty of secrets to discover. Some subtle Kate easter eggs you may have missed, what could very well be Bungie's next brand new game franchise, the return of some fan favourite exotics, oh Thunderlord how I've missed you old friend, what appears to be a brand new Black Armoury vendor and of course all the tastiest news nuggets from the past week. Let's effing well do this. First up, the Dreaming City, which as we now know is tied to a three week curse cycle. Every weekly reset, the Taken curse grows stronger. Not only does the city undergo a visual transformation, with big black Taken blights clogging up the place, but there's also new activities to discover. But what happens after the third week? Well, the curse subsides and the Taken threat retreats. Petrovenge returns to her original location and offers the same week one mission, the Broken Courier, but this time with new story dialogue, which is actually a pretty nice way of keeping things fresh. However, we did get a brand new Ascendant challenge and that's because there are six unique Ascendant challenges in total, so we've got a few more resets until these eventually repeat themselves too. And don't be surprised if Bungie throws in a new activity every now and again just to keep us on our toes. Now Bungie also revealed that the Primeval Gambit boss that has a chance of dropping the Seething Heart, an item that kicks off the exotic quest for Malfeasance, is more likely to appear in the third week of the curse cycle. Now the boss will still continue to spawn after the third reset, but it will be even more rare than usual. So what about this new Ascendant challenge? Well you can find the portal in in this lost sector. You know the drill by now, pop a queen's fall and jump through the portal to see what ascendant madness awaits you. And I gotta say, this ascendant challenge ain't much of a challenge, you just gotta jump on floating platforms until you get to the boss below. And what makes this particular jumping segment pretty easy is that every platform you need to progress is below you so you can clearly see what lies ahead and yeah, I actually had quite a bit of fun doing this, it's fun. You eventually reach this spooky looking structure and it's here where you'll find the boss. Now you can melt the boss pretty easily. It doesn't pose much of a threat. And then you collect your chest loot and of course cash in your bounty, which is what I'm gonna do now. Alright then, let's cash this in and see what I get. Let's pop that open. We got Sleepless, which I believe is a rocket launcher. So let's see what that dropped at and more importantly perhaps what the rolls are. This dropped at a tasty 576, which is pretty good for me. We've got Field Prep and we've got Cluster Bomb. Cluster Bomb is nice, I'm not a massive fan of Field Prep, but this is gonna be good infusion fuel. Let me actually just pop that on, just to see if that moves me up a light level. It moves me up to 571, so that weren't bad at all. Now guys, while we're on the subject of loot, looky what I have here. I've got another exotic engram to open, and I'm hoping that this will yield my first ever Forsaken weapon. Yeah, I still haven't got one. Or perhaps the Shards of Galena, which are the exotic gauntlets that I desperately want to get. And we're going to be opening this particular thing at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. You literally little loot enthusiast, I can't effing wait. Next up, some subtle Cade 6 easter eggs can be found throughout the tower. Yes, Cade was shot to death by an emo, but his memory lives on. Now check it out, the first little subtle easter egg is right here by Zavala. It's a plaque of the Ace of Spades. Obviously that is Cade's famous weapon, so that's the first one. Now the next one can be found in the tower's spicy ramen shop, and we all know that Cade loves a bit of spicy ramen. Check it out, here's a little poster of him, a little ode to Cade 6. We miss you, Cade. Well, I don't. I think you deserve to die, you Saki robo douche. Now, the next Cade Easter egg can be found right next to Amanda Holiday. As you can see, hanging up there is Cade's cloak. Did these two have a little something going on? Who knows? All I've got to say is this, Amanda, Cade's dead. I'm free. Do you want a piece? I'm just saying. And finally, we have Cade's favourite chicken, the Colonel, standing right where Cade himself used to be in the tower. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, who the hell is this chicken? Well, here's the back story between Cade and this effing chicken. Right then, so check this out. During the Cabal invasion of the city, this particular Cabal soldier wants to do himself some chicken killing. He's about to turn the Colonel into chicken nuggets. I kind of feel like chicken nuggets now. Anyway, Cade 6 is having effing none of it and stabs him right in the neck and saves the Colonel. And this is where this special relationship grows and blossoms. The chicken got saved, Cade saved his life, and the chicken is doing a little dance on the corpse of the Cabal soldier. So there you go. That's how this special relationship blossomed. I just hope this relationship wasn't too special. You can choke your own chicken, but don't choke a chicken's chicken. Do you get me, fam? You'll never choke me, you bastard. 
Next up, very interesting news for Bungie fans. The studio recently filed a trademark application for this specific word and logo, Matter. The question is, why? Well, before I attempt to answer that, here's a little context. Last year, Bungie signed a $100 million deal with Chinese company NetEase. This company now has a minority stake in Bungie and a seat on its board of directors. When Bungie released an official statement announcing its partnership with NetEase, the studio had this to say. We're excited to announce that we've entered into a new partnership with NetEase to help us explore new directions. With their industry expertise, they'll empower us to build new worlds and invite players new and old to join us there. Now, the trademark is listed under the categories Computer Game Software and Online Entertainment Service, which basically means it's an online video game. Is this trademark application the next big project Bungie's working on with NetEase? Many reliable sources seem to think so, and if so, what will this brand new world have to offer that Destiny doesn't already offer? Now, as a huge Bungie fan myself, I've got to say, this is a very exciting prospect indeed. I really want to find out what's going on here. Now, I'll be following this story very closely, and I'll be sure to keep you updated and fret not, Bungie ain't ditching Destiny for their next project. NetEase will work alongside separate teams inside Bungie to help make this game, well, whatever it may be. Next up, there's been a lot of excited buzz surrounding Sony's announcement that they will begin supporting cross-platform play. They've already begun with Fortnite. Other titles could very well be a possibility in the future. Could one of those titles be Destiny 2? Just imagine being able to play with anyone on any platform whenever you want. That would actually be amazing. Now, when IGN asked Activision about Crossplay, here's what the publisher had to say. We've had a great experience with Crossplay for Hearthstone on other platforms and have witnessed how compelling it can be for our community. There's still a lot of work to do to understand whether Crossplay might be integrated into our other games, so we'll be watching the upcoming tests and we'll assess what the potential impact of this feature would be for our players and our games. So yeah, watch this space I guess. The fact that Sony has finally taken this initial step into cross-platform play is promising, but let's see how widespread this actually becomes. Next up, this tweet from Destiny's official account. Rockstar has a competition that allows you to win prizes for completing in-game challenges. If you're interested, I've linked the site below. Here's the kind of prizes on offer. Next up, pretty conclusive evidence that Destiny 1's exotic heavy machine gun Thunderlord is returning. Now, Bungie has already confirmed that heavy machine guns are making a comeback in December's free seasonal update, but what about our beloved Thunderlord? Well, a very reliable Reddit source for Destiny leaks posted this. The new horde mode in Black Armory, where the more you survive, the better the loot will be, sounds cool. Oh, and also, Thunderlord in Festival of the Lost. And there's more. Gameplay design lead Josh Hamrick said, for your information, when Lars and I both referred to machine guns in today's vidoc, we were talking about auto rifles. Just wanted to clear that up sooner rather than later. That being said, your thunderous excitement has been noted. Thunderous is, of course, a cheeky reference to Thunderlord. And check this out, community manager Deej randomly posted a straight up gif of Thunderlord on his Twitter account back in August, which now makes perfect sense. Guys, Thunderlord is back on the menu. Belt fed heavy machine guns for the effing win. And check out what else is coming in December. Black Armory, the first DLC drop for annual pass holders. And this brief gameplay glimpse from Bungie reveals some pretty cool stuff, including a new Black Armory vendor and a new Black Armory exotic sniper rifle. Now, if we zoom in on this part of Bungie's brief gameplay reveal, we can see two tabs on this Bungie designer's computer. This tab says Black Armory Vendor, and this tab says Black Armory Exotic Sniper. Now, a new vendor for a new DLC drop makes sense. We got Brother Vance for Curse of Osiris, and Anna Bray for Warmind. So, who's Black Armory's vendor gonna be? Is it gonna be the rather odd-looking EXO that Bungie used to promote its Black Armory annual pass content? And is this guy the same EXO? Let's just zoom in on him, and then add this image for comparison. Harrison, what do you guys think? Is this the new Black Armory vendor? Leave a comment below and let me know your thoughts. Right then guys, it's now time for my favourite part of the video, the part where I finally get to open this effing exotic engram. Now like I said before, I have yet to get a single exotic forsaken weapon, I shit you not, I've yet to get one, so I'm hoping that this particular exotic engram will yield one. Ideally however, I would like to get the Shards of Galena, which are exotic hunter gauntlets. Either of those would be nice. Just don't give me an effing duplicate. Okay, I'm actually pretty excited. Please, please, RNG Jesus, give me what Papa Console needs. Let's do this. A booyaxi shaxi. We've got the sixth coyote. Okay, so that is a forsaken exotic chess piece. 
I, I haven't got it. Looks like I'm going to have to wait to get my first um, exotic forsaken weapon. But check it out. I now have the Gwisin Vest and I now have the sixth Coyote. So let me pop that on. Let me pop that on. Let me see what it looks like in game. Okay. It looks pretty fancy. Not going to lie. That, lo that, looks, that looks pretty cool. So let's just investigate what this thing is all about and have a little closer look at it as well. Right, okay, so the exotic perk for this is double dodge. You gain a second dodge charge, which I guess will come in very useful in a lot of situations. Crucible, PvE, so that's actually pretty decent. I'm gonna I'm gonna have a, some fun testing this one out for sure. Let's see the perks that it dropped with. Unflinching scout rifle aim, unflinching large arms, uh, un uh, enhanced unflinching scout rifle aim, cool. Um, and we've also got sidearm reserves and primary ammo finder. So there you go. I actually got a forsaken piece of exotic armor to drop. I'm actually in shock. But I've yet to get an exotic weapon. An exotic forsaken weapon. The search continues. Okay then, so I couldn't end this video without testing out that double dodge charge. So that's exactly what the F we're going to do. So here we go. We got one... And we got two. There you go in quick succession. That's what it's all about. It's the double dodge charge and I just effing well did it. So there you go. That's what this exotic does. Nice. So yeah guys, we've got a busy few months ahead of us. Festival of the Lost in October and Black Armory in December. Now if you want to keep up to date with these new content drops, subscribe and turn on notifications. Now if you enjoyed this video, give it a cheeky thumbs up. And if you want to watch more content from me right now, click the on-screen image. Thank you so much for watching and we'll speak again very soon my friends.